Hello, everybody. We're getting things set up here. Uh, we're on Instagram Live and Facebook Live at the same time. As we uh, give it just a few moments for people to get on, we'll get started. Hello to everybody. Feel free to say hello in the comments. It'd be nice if I could hear back from you, of course. Um, but you can feel free to say something there in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Got a few with us on uh, Instagram Live. Hello to everyone. Over on over on Facebook, you might see a question up there on the top right of your screen, I believe. Question is, how can we pastors be praying for you? We want you to know that anything you type in there in that box, we'll keep that private, but we want to be praying for you. So if there's something that some way we can pray for you, please let us know. Of course, if you want others to be praying for you as well, you want to make that public, feel free to type that right there in the comments. Other people will be able to see that and be praying for you as well. Good evening to everybody. We're going to be looking tonight at uh, a psalm, just real briefly. Um, this is not meant to be a sermon tonight, but more of a uh, just a quick devotional. Um, so we'll be done pretty quickly, but wait for some others to join us. Pastor Josh is joining us as well. You can't see him, but he'll be commenting um, in the commenting feed over on Facebook. Hello there on Instagram. Good to see you. So I see uh, I see Pastor Josh commenting. Again, hello to everybody. Just want to have a quick time of devotions. Um, gather today, tonight. Those of us in Beacon Church, I'm sure there's others out there as well that might join us. But special hello to our uh, our family, Beacon Church, we miss you all. It's so difficult to not gather together on a regular basis, certainly Sunday mornings, but also, um, you know, different Bible studies and all kinds of ministries are happening all the time at Beacon. And so it's sad that we can't get together, but we're glad to be able to jump on here. Hello, Barb. Absolutely, my pleasure. There's a little bit of a delay there in comments. But uh, as I see comments come in, if I take notice, I'll I'll make mention of that again. Pastor Josh is is commenting along there in uh, in comments because well I can't do it all. <laughs> We're going to be turning to a psalm um, in just a few moments. Hello there on Instagram Live. I see you waving. Nice to see you. We'll give it another minute or so. I'm going to throw out a poll just for a little bit of fun. Um, let's let's see. This does this is not very significant in any way, but I'm curious to know how people are feeling. What do you think? Are you more excited about spring? or more disappointed that we didn't have any snow this winter. I feel pretty torn on that myself. Oh, my brother Benjamin. Wow. Bonsoir. Brim. Wissons-je en pile. I'm going to have to stick with English tonight, but Benjamin, my my right-hand guy in, in Haiti, is with us. Great to see you, my brother. 
it's uh well we feel so famous right we have people from all over the world <laughs> Yeah, no snow. I know. Isn't that sad? You know, I didn't have snow really for the last 10 years of my life. And uh, and now, sad. No snow all winter long. That's tough. So far, 100% of people are saying they're ready for spring. I guess if I had to choose, I probably would say that as well. Well, it's good to see everybody joining us both on Facebook and Instagram Live. This is the first time we're doing this. We're giving it a, giving it a try to see if this might be helpful uh, to people. So again, I believe, uh, let's see. So there you go. A hundred percent of you are saying that you're ready for spring. I'll go with that too. So um, I just want to say again, you'll see a question up there in the top right. How can your pastors at Beacon be praying for you? Anything you share there will be uh, held in private. But if you want other people to be praying for you, um, feel free to you know put a, a prayer request over there in the comments. That'd be great. Um, be great to uh, to be praying for one another, and I know us uh, speaking pastors we're constantly talking about. We wish we could be praying for everybody. We wish we knew how you know what's going on in people's lives, and we've been making phone calls and contacting. Um, but feel free to share your your prayer requests. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, again, just a very quick devotional that I want to share with you tonight. Um, this is a passage that I have turned to in so many at so many points in my life, but as I've been going through, uh, you know, difficult things in my past, and in fact, there at Beacon, some of you may remember that I preached from Psalm 46, and you know, with all that's going on in our world right now, in our lives, in our region, whatever, um, we definitely find ourselves in a moment of trouble, and I love the Word of God. One. I mean, obviously, I guess, but one of the reasons I love the Word of God is that it's so honest with us. It just speaks of the truth. It doesn't, you know, candy coat anything. It's just so real. And there are different passages in Scripture that, many passages in, passages in Scripture that refer to times that are difficult in our lives. And Psalm 46 is one of those Psalms. I want to go ahead and read that uh, psalm with you and then make a few observations and then we'll be done for this evening. Again, I'm not preaching tonight, just a quick devotional. So Psalm 46, um, this is what it says. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come. Behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen, right? I mean, you read that, you, you just can't help but be encouraged. God is a great God. Not only is he great, but he is present. As I read that psalm, 
And as I've been reflecting on it over and over and over again in my life, um, I've looked at it in multiple different ways, but there are, I believe, very easily as you read through that, and I encourage you to read through it again after we're done. I like to say that there are five anchors that we can hold on to in a time of trouble. And I'm just going to run through them real quick. First, God is present. Well, that's right in the beginning, right? God is our refuge and strength, a very present. I love that it says very, very present help in trouble. In verse four, it speaks of him being a holy habitation. It says that God is in the midst. You see, this is his presence. And then in verse seven and in verse 11 as well, it's threaded through this whole psalm. It says that the Lord is with us. Isn't that a great encouragement? We think about what we're going through in our world right now, in our lives and in our personal lives, whether it's the, um, you know, the, the coronavirus that we're dealing with, or I'm sure that, you know, life goes on. There's lots of other things going on in our lives. People are hurting all over, including some of us. Boy, it's such a great reminder. God is present in the midst of our pain. It does not candy coat it. There are very difficult things that we go through, but God is present in our midst. Secondly, God's protection in our midst. God's protection. Look right there at verse one. God is our refuge. He is our help in trouble. This is who God is to us. In verse two, it says that we don't need to fear. Why? Because he is our protection. We can count on that. That is all throughout scripture. There are so many different passages that we can go to, but God is our protection. It's, you know, we, we have that right here in Psalm 46. Third thing is God's peace is available in the midst of our pain. Peace that surpasses understanding. Peace that is beyond what makes earthly sense. As I was preaching just recently, I was speaking of that, you know, sometimes uh, we can be constantly looking at things from an earthly perspective. And if you look at peace from an earthly perspective, it makes no sense. How can we have peace when things can be so much, um, things can be so painful in our lives? Even in the midst of that, God's peace is available. It says in Psalm 46 here, it speaks of gladness that he brings. It speaks of him being our fortress. See, that's, that's a wall of protection that he provides, but that provides us to be inside the wall and to be peaceful. And then in verse 10, he says that we should be still. Boy, don't we need a lot of stillness right now in our life? Be still. Know that he is God. So he's present. He's, his protection is available. His peace beyond our wildest imagination, beyond what makes earthly sense, is available. The fourth thing is God's power in the midst of our pain. Again, I encourage you, read through the psalm. His power is everywhere. It speaks of him uttering his voice. It speaks of him bringing desolations upon the earth. He is so in control, even when we think things are out of control. It says that he makes wars cease. No matter what's going on, he is all powerful. It's all through this. God is our refuge and strength. He's powerful. Don't lose sight of that. And then the last thing is that God has purpose in our pain. This can be difficult sometimes to, to really think about. When difficult things happen, did God send that to us? You got to think theologically about that. Did God send cancer into my life through my wife? Did God send the coronavirus? Well, I can't, I can't get there, but I absolutely believe that God can use those things. God can redeem those things to bring himself glory. God has purpose in the midst of our pain. 
He is always at work. Read through the Psalm 46, you'll see so many action words speaking of who God is and what God is, is constantly doing for us. He is a God of action. He's always working around us. I love Blackaby's study. It says that all of us as believers, we should constantly be looking around and finding what God is doing and joining him. See, God is at work. He has purpose. And we can find that purpose in the midst of our pain. So that's those five things. Presence, his presence, his protection, his peace, his power, and his purpose. Yes, there are five Ps. I couldn't help it, but it works. And it's absolutely here in this psalm. Those five things are an anchor, as we say, for our soul. I want you to picture with me, and I'm going to close with this. Picture with me a tree just being blown in the midst of a storm. And that tree is just being pushed, pushed by the wind. And those roots that are going down from that tree are holding firm to the ground. We, they're anchoring that tree in the midst of a storm. And I believe that these are absolutely five anchors for that tree. As we are anchored to the ground, as we are rooted, deeply rooted in the Lord, and as we are holding on to these promises from Psalm 46, we can continue to grow. Our leaves can continue to be green. We can even bear fruit. I've been hearing things of different people serving their fellow neighbors, their families, their fellow church members, people that they don't even know. I was encouraged by a guy walking on the street today. It was wonderful how people are reaching out. What can we be doing to be bearing fruit in the midst of this pain? You know, Sometimes it doesn't feel like these five things are true. But we're reminded over and over and over again in Scripture that they are true and they can be known, they can be experienced. Um, I, won't, I won't go into all the different examples, but there are clearly stories in Scriptures where it seems that God was absent, but he was very much present. And he was providing protection and peace and he's all powerful and he had purpose. I'd love to share more with you about that. Feel free to reach out to me and we can talk more. Love to hear from you. So that's what I wanted to share tonight. I hope that you find it encouraging. Stay rooted in who God is, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. He is a great God and he's at work. May God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you all once again, boy, as soon as possible. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to get together um, this way, to gather and uh, to look at your word, to be encouraged, even in the fellowship of, of just a few of us being together. Lord, I pray that these words as you have given to us, I just pray that they would fall freshly, sweetly into our lives, that we would hear them and be encouraged. Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you are doing. Lord, show us, reveal yourself to us as we remain faithful, as we hold on to these truths, these anchors. Lord, help us to flourish, help us to thrive where you have placed us in this moment. Oh God, we do pray that you would help our people, help us serve others, even in the midst of what's going on. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening, everybody. We're going to sign off. Um, may the Lord bless you.